Of the five senses, how many do you use when cooking and eating? If you said all five, you would be correct. Taste and smell are two of the most obvious, but as the saying goes, we eat with our eyes. How food is perceived textually on the tongue or through sound, think of the satisfaction of eating a crunchy chip, also factors into the process. Flavor comes from the food itself, the way we combine ingredients and how they are prepared. Taste is the individual perception of those flavors and no two people have the same perceptions. Most of our perceptions of flavor are through smell, also known as the olfactory cells. The mouth and nose are connected through a passageway, which makes this a symbiotic relationship. Scientists now say we can detect over one trillion odors. But without smell, our flavor perceptions are limited to a few basic ones. Taste is perceived through receptors on the papilla, also known as taste buds. There are four types of papilla, located in different areas of the tongue containing various amounts of receptors. The highest concentration of papilla are in the back of the tongue closest to the olfactory passageway. The basic taste sensations include sweet, salt, bitter, sour, and umami. We add salt when we cook through sodium chloride, known as table salt or sea salt. We can also add it through other ingredients like seaweed, soy sauce, or sodium-rich ingredients like celery. Cane sugar, honey, agave, corn syrup, and stevia are examples of ingredients that add sweetness. Sour ingredients include vinegar, citrus juice, and wine. Bitterness is found in ingredients like cacao beans used in the production of chocolate and also coffee beans. Bitterness can also be found in herbs like sage and rosemary. Umami is defined as the savory notes we perceive in ingredients like meat, cheese, tomatoes, and mushrooms. Umami can also be created in the cooking process. Various cultures define taste sensations other than the five scientifically recognized ones. Some of them include spiciness, if you think of peppers and peppercorns, coolness, as in mint, fattiness, neutral flavors, such as water, and astringent flavors found in tea or red wine. The basic flavors we perceive work together to complement or contrast each other, creating a balance that elevates the tasting experience. For example, sweet mellows acetic or bitter flavors. Sour adds brightness, livens tastes, reduces salt sensations, and balances hot chilies. Salt counteracts bitterness and accents sweetness. Bitterness adds color, complexity, and depth. Umami adds a savory finish to dishes. Spiciness is also an important sensation, but not a scientifically recognized one because it's a chemical reaction that doesn't involve the taste buds. Instead, it sends more of a pain signal. It adds warmth to the palate and helps flavor sensations to linger on the tongue. Flavor is also added through the cooking process. A term called Maillard reaction occurs when proteins and sugars in food are transformed by heat, producing new flavors, aromas, and colors. As we now know, it's not just about taste and smell. Textures add to the sensory experience too. Crunchy or smooth textures add to the experience, as does different temperatures of hot and cold. Another way to think about flavor combinations is by identifying flavor profiles. Flavor profiles are often defined by ethnicity, such as Italian, Thai, or Moroccan cuisine. In the example of Thai flavor profile, you can see how the different elements of taste sensations are used to create a flavor balance. 
Each ingredient adds basic taste sensations that are unique to their cuisine. In Thai cooking, this includes the use of sweet ingredients like palm sugar, sour notes of lime and tamarind, salt seasonings through the addition of soy sauce and fish sauce, chilies, ginger, and peppercorns add spiciness, bitterness through the incorporation of bitter gourd, and umami through meats, poultry, tofu, and seasoning. These combine together to create the unique flavors that we identify with each cuisine. All of the basic taste sensations are in play in the cooking process. The chef's job is to balance them. We use a red wine sauce as a basic example of the six elements, adding spiciness to the mix and showing how they come together to create a perfect balance. Umami comes from the brown sauce. Sourness is added through red wine. Salt, of course, is saltiness. For spices, we use peppercorns. To add bitterness, we're adding herbs like bay and thyme. And then sweet notes are added through the addition of butter at the end of the cooking process. In the example of the sweet sensations, we use a creme brulee. For umami, we are using egg yolks and cream. For sweetness, we're using sugar. For saltiness, we're again using salt. For spiciness, we're adding vanilla. For bitterness, we burn the sugar on the crust. And for sourness, a little fresh fruit. Individual preparations may carry the essential elements of taste sensation, as in the example of the red wine sauce, or they may be components assembled on the plate, as in the example of the creme brulee. The ratio for a savory dish will vary from a sweet preparation because a sweet item will be naturally higher in sugar while a savory one will emphasize umami. Some ingredients provide more than one taste sensation. Butter is an example of an ingredient that adds sweet, savory, and fatty sensations. You can create great tasting food every time you cook by following a few simple guidelines. Always remember the five basic taste sensations, what they contribute to a dish, and how they work together to complement each other. Then by breaking down the taste experience into these elements, you can determine what is needed and adjust it to provide the balance it needs.